Team Symar is made up of the University of Florida, uh, Autonomous Solutions out of Logan, Utah, and the Eigenpoint Company out of High Springs. Uh, the vehicle is called the Navigator, and it's sort of built in phases, where the, the first step is that you have to build a solid, reliable platform. Uh, we want something that's not going to break down, something that can handle the rough, uh, rugged terrain of the desert. So we went with uh, what's called a rock crawler. Uh, basically, it's just really tough. Once you have a solid, reliable platform, the next step is to um, automate the base uh, actuators on the system. That is your steering, throttle, brake, and shifter. And we put a lot of effort and quite a bit of money into making sure that those systems are rock solid, that they're not going to fail, and once, once we had done it, that we could just depend on that and move on to the higher uh, functions of the vehicle. The next phase of the system is, is the, the intelligence. So our computing system is divided into four segments. First segment is our low-level controller. That's a computer that controls the steering actuator, the throttle, the brake, and the shifter. A second one is for uh, the sensing component. Sensing component consists of uh, a LADAR system that scans for obstacles, a LADAR system that looks for the smooth parts of the road, and another, a third LADAR system that is specifically designed to find cliffs on the sides of the mountains and the switchbacks. We have another part of the sensing element is the, what we call our smart arbiter. This is a computer dedicated to just combining all the outputs of the other sensors. All the computers, there are 10 in total, are all connected through Ethernet, and they're housed in, the, in a vibration isolated enclosure. Uh, with the, these 10 computers put off a lot of heat, so we have to have a three-quarter ton air conditioner, and we insulate the box, and with that we can keep the, in, the enclosure at about 65 degrees, even if it's 120 outside. Uh, we built a, an enclosure and it's vibration isolated by 16 air cushion bags. That allows all the computers that are inside. I think it, the Grand Challenge has just really motivated us and everybody, to, because it's a competition, uh, has really motivated us to work probably a lot harder than we normally would to, to try and be the best, uh, try and build the best machine that we possibly could, and just achieve the challenge of crossing the desert. It's got strong axles, it's got uh, four-wheel drive, it's got curry axles, uh, Detroit lockers in the front and rear, uh, gives it four-wheel drive all the time to the ground. Um, it's got uh, Bilstein shocks and springs, really strong suspension. It'll allow us to get off the course a little bit more than some of the other vehicles. And we can make a little mistake, few mistakes in, in the processing and still survive. And we put a lot of effort and quite a bit of money into making sure that those systems are rock solid, that they're not going to fail. And once, once we had done it, that we could just depend on that and move on to the higher uh, functions of the vehicle. <laughs>